Utah. Uh, let's keep moving down now. 611. We go back to the Mountain West, and I've been hesitant on the Mountain West. Max is big on them. In NC State, another one of, of these teams coming out of the Power Conference that kind of slid in. I have NC State in this game. Like I said, I'm really down on the Mountain West. Max, who do you have? I have NC State. Not because I'm down on the Mountain West by any, by any stretch. I think San Diego State, the Aztecs, they were a two seed last year. They've got back here. They're certainly establishing themselves as a top program in the country. Now two years in a row, what are they going to do next year? Who knows? And they lost a lot of players this year and were still able to come back. I have NC State simply because I think they had a tough schedule in the ACC. I don't think that their 22-12 and 12 record really shows how good a team they are. Controversial at the end there versus UNC in the ACC tournament. Last team called, what must they have been thinking in rally? If they weren't going to get a bid after that controversial ending, they must have been freaking out. They get that. They use a little bit of momentum. I'm going to say the chip on the shoulder again, thinking that they deserve the chance to get into that ACC championship game and test uh, Florida State. I think they're going to play pretty well. I think they're actually going to overtake San Diego State considerably. Tim? I have North Carolina State as well, and I also have them beating uh, Georgetown in the next Really? Game okay. Because uh, I know we're going to get to this, but... Yeah. Uh, uh, they're in a pretty easy uh, little uh, section there, and uh, that's why I have them going to the Sweet 16. I mean, they had a good showing, I think, in the ACC tournament. All right, so let's keep moving down to that Georgetown game, and this is one of the games that's on upset alert even in the first round. Yep. Belmont Bruins, a lot of teams are, are big on them. We yes. don't know a lot about them. Max, yes. fill us in. I know a little bit about them. I'll be honest, I haven't watched much, but I watched all the way back when they played Duke on opening day, and I watched them just this past week when they uh, won their tournament. But they lost at Cameron to Duke 77-76. Then their second loss of the season came in their second game. They started off 0-2, and if you look at their record, they're 27-7, so they've gone 27-5 and since, unimportant to point out. They lost at Memphis, 97-81. Memphis, a team that was really rolling at the beginning of the season, a top-ranked team. They're, they score 82 points a game, fourth in the nation. They have won 14 in a row. They haven't lost since January 21st. It's been a while. They've been taking down teams left and right. It is probably the most intriguing 14-3 matchup that we have seen in a while. Belmont's a team that's always been, when they get in, 14, 15, 16 seed. They gave Duke a run for their money a couple years ago, if you guys remember that game. Belmont is a team to watch out for. They've been here before. It's weird to say, but Belmont has been in this big game where they're expect not expected, but they are... Uh, they're getting some attention. People are giving them some attention, thinking maybe they could pull off the upset. Is this where I go with that 14 seed pulling off the upset on the three? I say no. I think Georgetown has the experience. They have that toughness from the Big East. I think they came so close to beating Syracuse at Syracuse in overtime, obviously. They ended up losing by three. I think Belmont gives them a run for their money, comes down to the end, but I'm just not comfortable enough choosing the Belmont Bruins over the Georgetown Hoyas. Yeah, all, all that, that, that uh, seed all time, 14, uh, 14 seeds won 16 out of 108 times. <laughs> uh, so, Tim, you, you have Georgetown winning that game. Yeah, but... just that one game. Uh, I think Georgetown is one of those teams you never know what you're going to get with them this season. They've been up and down. I think they're a little high. I, th I don't think they deserve a three seed. And uh, they actually, a couple years ago, they lost to Ohio, I believe, in uh, 2010 as a three seed. They got upset by the 14 early on. So maybe that happens again. All right, so, so let's keep moving there. And another one of these 7-10 matchups. Lost last Max. year in the first round, too. Throw that out there, VCU. <laughs> another one of these 7-10 um, games you, you said you're not big on. St. Mary's, Purdue. I have really no interest in this game. See, I do. I, I'm going you against do? you on a lot here, but I have to say I do. I think St. Mary's is actually a pretty good team. I watched them beat Gonzaga. I watched them play throughout the season. They had the game against Murray State where they came up a little bit short. But, I mean, Murray State, another great team. I think St. Mary's, the, the Gales, can actually do something. They're led by Della Vidova, who is one of the most exciting players to watch in the country. He scores points, he shoots the three, he gets inside, gets and ones, does everything. I think they take down Purdue, a team that, yeah, Robbie Hummel's done a great job, but Purdue's real chance was back before Robbie Hummel had a season-ending ACL tear when they had our now Celtics, uh, Etwan Moore and Jawan Johnson. Purdue, is they, they need to reestablish their program. They're not going to build around Robbie Hummel, who's going to be out of there after this year. They, they just don't have enough. They have 12 losses on the season, barely got into the tournament. In my opinion, I don't even think they should have been in here. I think St. Mary's takes them down 27-5. and five. That's a pretty impressive record for the Gales. Yeah, Tim, who do you have in that game? I have St. Mary's, but I don't see them going anywhere after that. They lost to Murray State. Uh, they they won, uh, won two and lost one against Gonzaga, but uh, that game, I feel like whoever wins it is just going to lose to Kansas next round anyway. Yeah, and let's move down uh, to that game. Kansas-Detroit. Um, does Detroit have any shot in this? And, uh, no. Just break down the Kansas No. Team? Maybe no. if Detroit was one of those teams that came out of their conference with a 25-6 and six record, but I look at it, 22-13, and 13, not going to happen. They barely got in, weren't even expected to win their tournament. Got, I don't want to say lucky, but they did play great. I watched that game. But 
I, I just don't think Detroit has enough to knock off the Kansas Jayhawks. So, I mean, we still have Missouri Norfolk State, but you were, you were big on Lehigh. Is Lehigh the best 15 seeds to get an upset in this tournament? I think they're the most likely. One, because of Ryan Kelly's injury on Duke, and two, because of uh, McCollum's play for Lehigh. They, they have a great player, and the team they're playing could be without their best player. And I, I'm going to call it the Syracuse factor, because I go back to where Syracuse was the one seed and ended up losing to the four seed uh, uh, Butler just two years ago, where they did not play Arunzi Onowaku, thinking, oh, we'll hold him off, you know, let's let him get healthy for when we actually need him. Guess what? You actually need him that time, Jim Beheim. You didn't get it done. I think that if Duke is too, too lax and they take off, if they take out uh, Kelly and try and give him that first round off, let him not play until Saturday or Sunday whenever they're playing, I think that they can see a problem with C.J. McCollum taking over that game. All right, so let, let's break down now the, the big Midwest. Who are your final two teams, Tim? I have Kansas going to the Final Four, beating UNC, uh, really because I don't see anyone else who could knock off Kansas in that round. Like I said, Georgetown. Yeah. Uh, I have them losing to NC State. So. But I uh, UNC, I, I just think... I know Can this is a really tough one because Kansas and UNC both didn't win their uh, conference tournaments, but uh, UNC, I, I feel like they have too much chance to lose, uh, especially when they almost lost to uh, NC State there at the end and then losing to Florida State. So I have Kansas. Yeah, um, some injuries. I think uh, Georgetown, uh, I mean, for UNC, I think some injuries uh, could give them some trouble. I don't know. And then on the other side, Kansas-Georgetown, I think, is the flip of a coin. Really, I think those are two very evenly matched teams, one of the weakest Kansas teams we've seen in a while. I have Kansas coming out, I then have them beating UNC to go to the Final Four. See, I'm going against you again. You, you keep saying Kansas is a weak team. First of all, I have NC State. Well, they're a very strong town. team, but they're one of the weaker. A lot of people will pick Kansas. Maybe State compared to the last couple years when they had the, the last Morris couple of years, there. they're not as good as But uh, I have NC State beating Georgetown. So I'll start up top. UNC Michigan, I think UNC goes by. I don't think Michigan is able to contend with them. So I have UNC versus the winner of NC State, Kansas. I have Kansas going by. I think Kansas is just too good a team for uh, NC State to contend with. UNC, Kansas. Very interesting game. I think UNC is the better team. I think on a neutral court, UNC should win. But I don't even consider this a neutral court. And they did not do a good job, this selection committee, giving the number one seeds a true, I don't want to say easy route to the finals, but a preferable route to the final four. UNC will be playing Kansas, if that is to happen, in the Elite Eight. Where will that game be? St. Louis. Now, I'm not a geographer, but when I look at the map, I see Kansas here, I see Carolina here, and I see St. Louis a lot closer to Kansas than it is to Carolina. Clearly a home court advantage for Kansas there. They played in Missouri. It's not too long a trek. Look at UNC. They're going to have to get on a plane, fly all the way over there. I think it's pretty unfair for UNC to have to play that game in Missouri, in St. Louis. But I still have UNC coming out on top. I think they're too athletic. I don't think Kansas can contend with them. Sure, Thomas Robinson and Tyshawn Taylor will take over and do all that they can. But two players can't contend with four players that I see on UNC. All right, so we have two for two on Kansas, one on UNC. I'm going to uh, put uh, right, Kansas in on the official. And you're all going to have to bow down to me in a couple weeks when I'm right and you're wrong. He, he has been the expert <laughs> the past couple of weeks, but that's the whole thing about this. You never know. Finally, in the West, you have Michigan State as your one seed, Missouri as your two, Marquette as your three. This, this is the interesting one. This is I where love it. I love this, it. this is as textbook March Madness as it gets. One through four in this bracket, maybe even five and six are teams that can do damage, but at the same time have glaring weaknesses. Let's start from the top. Michigan, LIU, Brooklyn. What, uh, tell us about this Michigan team. Michigan State. Michigan State, sorry. I, I don't know. I, I've, I haven't been a fan of Michigan State. They have seven losses. Sure, sort of like Belmont. They lost their first two games to UNC on the aircraft carrier, which I'm sure I haven't watched. That was pretty awesome. I, I love that. As a college basketball fan, it was pretty cool. And then they lost to Duke. Sure, that's all the way back in November, but... I just don't see this Michigan State team as a number one seed. I really think Missouri should have had it. Missouri has 30 wins, and they're not a number one seed. There's something wrong with that picture. They won the Big 12. They beat Baylor in the championship. It's not like they got fed an easy route. I really think Missouri should be the number one seed. But I'll talk about Michigan State. They, they, they're not as good as everyone thinks. Sure, they have an inside presence. Sure, Draymond Green's a great player. I think they'll get past LIU Brooklyn. I don't see the 16 seeds making a run this year, getting that first win. But Michigan State, I think that they're very vulnerable as they get into the second or third round of this tournament. All right, so we have a caller right now as uh, we keep going on. <laughs> TJ, what's going on, man? How's it going, guys? All right, we have a little bit of audio issue. Sorry if we can't hear you, but what you want? What you want to add to the show? I want to know if you guys think uh, this Notre Dame team is legit. I have them beating Duke, actually. I mean, I just <laughs> see potential in them. What do you guys think? I think them being a seventh seed is, is all based on that win against Syracuse. I think if they don't win that game, they're a 10 at best. Um, they, they don't have that, that one 
piece that you can really attach to that you can really attach to and say, okay, well, this is the reason I like them. I, I mean, they'll beat. I haven't beaten Xavier, but they're not going any further than that. You see, CJ, when I look at that uh, Notre Dame team, I see eleven losses, but I can't use that as my argument. Because I go to Xavier and they have 12 losses. And yes, the Notre Dame's played in a tougher conference, obviously the Big East over the Atlantic 10. But when I look at Xavier, they've had controversy all season, going back to the fight at the very beginning of the season with Cincinnati. And everything put together, I think Xavier is actually the more experienced team. They're here every single year, it seems. So is Notre Dame, but Notre Dame hasn't really made a run deep lately. I think Notre Dame's going to lose first round. I, I, I do think that that Syracuse win is putting a lot, a lot of uh, props to Notre Dame. But 11 losses, they didn't do much to show of anything in the Big East tournament. Sure, they won that one game in overtime, but then they got taken down by Louisville. I, I don't think this Notre Dame team has the firepower or the leadership to be able to beat Xavier with two hallways, who's one of the most electric players in the country, when he decides to play. Yeah, I have mean, Notre Dame beaten Xavier simply because I don't think Xavier is that good. But if you look at Notre Dame, like you said, 11 losses, that's too many, I think, to get past Duke. So I, I have Duke advancing and playing Baylor. All right, TJ, you still there? Yeah, uh, I was going to say they did beat Louisville earlier in the season, yeah. and they also beat Marquette earlier in uh, February. You, do you guys think those uh, wins are enough to make them pass, like, questionable? It's, it's not about what you've done. It's about what you're going to do, I think, is the case. See, see, it's a great point. They, they have beaten good teams, but when you play in the Big East, you're going to get a lot of chances to beat good teams. There's not a single team from top to bottom. I go to the worst team in the Big East, in Providence, in my opinion. Sure, you can say to Paul, but I look at Providence... Providence beat Louisville by 31 points. I look at DePaul. DePaul beat Louisville, I'm pretty sure. When you play in the Big East, sure, you're going to get some big wins. But I, I just don't think this Notre Dame team, I go back to where they had Herring Goody, and I actually put them in the final four thinking they would make a run. They were in the bottom right, and they ended up losing first round, just shooting me in the foot. So I have a little bit of bias. I don't like Notre Dame. I'm still holding a grudge. I'm glad the Celtics got rid of Herring Goody. I just can't stand <laughs> Notre Dame. But I really do think that two hallways, the best player in that 7-10 game, I think Xavier is going to be able to feed off his momentum and be able to win. I feel, yeah, I feel like Big e uh, the Big East is a little bit down. Uh, even last year in the tournament, besides Connecticut, most of them were out early. And I think the Big 12 and the Big 10, if they, if they had wins against some of the better teams in those conferences, uh, it would have been a lot better for them. But uh, against Louisville and Cincinnati have been too up and down. But, but all, said and, all said and done, I, I'm going I'm to commend you here, TJ. Don't change your bracket. Don't listen to us. Because when you listen to us, and then Notre Dame pulls off the upset, which obviously if you listen to us, it's going to happen. You're going to be coming back at us, and I'm going to feel really bad. So don't change your bracket if you feel that Notre Dame is the better team. All right, TJ, I think that's all the time we got for you right now. So thanks for calling in. Hopefully we'll see you back in here next week. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, cool. So let's keep.